Hello, everyone. Hey, Hi, Victoria. How are you? Good. Thank you. I'm so excited about today's episode. Super excited uh, about today's episode. Yes, today um, we are going to be talking about the county commissioners. So we are going to continue our local government series. Um, if you guys are new to our civics chat, my name is Victoria and I'm the civic engagement coordinator for Vecinos of Deeper Highway. And my name is Michelle Zuluaga. I'm the Civic Participation Manager for the Latino Community Fund Georgia. We are super excited to have yet another episode of Civics Chat, uh, where we are going to go over everything that's going to be on the 2020 ballot, uh, including county commissioner. And that's the reason why we wanted to have this episode today. We know that a lot of people out there, y'all go and vote. But then you look at the screen and you say, oh my gosh, what is all of this? <laughs> yes, I can't even lie. I, I've had that happen to me before. <laughs> oh, you know, and I'm guilty too. You know, it's just, there's so many positions, so many people running for different things and you, it's easy to get overwhelmed. So here at Civics Chat, we're going to talk every single episode of a new position or a new elected official that's going to be on your ballot for 2020. So remember to join us every other Thursday. For sure. So uh, we're going to talk about county commissioners today. So Victoria, tell us a little bit about what is a county commissioner to even start with. Okay, so a county commissioner in, well, okay, so in the county commission form of government, mm -hmm. um, a body of elected commissioners serves both the executive and the legislative branch um, duties. So meaning they enact local ordinances and they administer them as well. Wow. So like it's super. So for what I'm understanding really is that county commissioners make sure that, you know, everything is going well and they kind of like oversee our executive and legislative bodies, you know, at a, on a county level to make sure that everything's yeah. going good, that things are being enacted and yeah. they pretty much hold a pretty important position. Yes, they do. Exactly. So, you know, I also want to know, um, you know, how many members are there in a county commission? So it's usually made out of three to five members. They are elected officials. And yes. um, in some counties in Georgia, they actually only have one. So, for example, DeKalb County has seven part-time county commissioners. That is a lot actually. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then Fulton County also has seven county commissioners. But if you go in counties that are less populated, they have less county commissioners, which I find super interesting. Yeah, so how they actually determine the county um, commission members, it depends on the amount of districts in each county. And then that which is determined by the population. So this is another example of why you should fill out your census in order to get proper representation, um, proper amount of county commissioners. Mm -hmm. So if you need to fill out the census and you have not done it yet, uh, go to my2020census.gov. Um, but yeah, an example would be DeKalb County. DeKalb County has five districts. Um, and then they have two super districts, one for the west side, one for the east side. So everybody in DeKalb County actually has two county commissioners. So they have one from the super district and one from the regular district. That's why DeKalb County has seven part-time members. Gotcha. Uh, yes. And then for another example would be for Fulton County. Uh, Fulton County has six districts and then they have one, one chairman. So that makes up the seven county commissioner board. Um, so that's just a little example. So you get how each county kind of does different roles. Mm -hmm. Like Fulton has a chairman, but not the cab. Right. Uh, yeah. So Michelle, how long do they usually serve for? So county commissioners serve up to four years. Uh, they can get reelected up to three times. So it's very important, you know, that's that's a lot of years. That's 12 years that a person can impact your day to day life. So, yes. uh, you know, especially when it comes to local governments, local governments make decisions that impact your neighborhood, that impact, you know, that pothole that down the road that you always have to drive over every single morning uh, and so much more, everything from education to universities to things like that. So it's very important for you guys to know uh, what these roles are. 
um, and how long they serve because 12 years is, or up to 12 years is a long time uh, for somebody to serve. So, um, Victoria, how are these people chosen? How are these elected officials chosen? So they are elected through the district and elections. So we elect them. Okay. Um, yeah, so it's up to us to choose our county commissioners. So another reason why you should go out and vote. Um, so when you go and now you're going to be like, now I know what a county commissioner is. Thanks to Civic Chat. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. That is our mission here is that when you go and you go out and vote and you're in front of that screen, you know what a county commissioner is. You know what a tax commissioner is through, you know, watching this um, this show. So we are super excited. Of course, you guys, you know, ask questions in the comments. Don't be shy. Uh, we love to hear from you guys for sure. So um, another thing, another super interesting thing that uh, I thought was their roles and county commissioner duties. What do they do in their job and what do they actually report, right? So a couple of these things is recording of deeds, general government administration. So they make sure that everything, the logistics behind it all, that everything's, you know, going yes. well. Um, property taxes, uh, assets and collections, law enforcement and corrections, uh, poor release. So things, you know, things for uh, programs, make sure that they're doing well. Road, bridge, airport maintenance, um, recreation and parks, uh, judicial administration. They have such a big role in our local government uh, function, you know, yes. and that impacts everybody um so it's very important for all of you one to know what a county commissioner does and two it's very important for all of y'all to know that they will likely be on the 2020 ballot yes um i think i believe you said how many districts are going to be in the 2020 ballot so actually there will be two districts that will be electing the county commissioner. This will be district one of Georgia. So this is actually in the Southeast part of Georgia. Uh, this okay. includes Savannah uh, and then down to almost the border of Florida. So just so y'all know, y'all will see it. And also district four. So this is Gwinnett, Rockdale, Roxdale, um, you know, DeKalb. Y'all will also see county commissioner on your ballot box. So make sure you know who's running, make sure you know who's running for your county commissioner so that you know what you, uh, or the power that you're gonna have when you're in the ballot box. For sure. Yeah, so and, if you, and if you want to just like go online to see who your county commissioner is, just put who is my county commissioner and your county uh, website will show up usually at the top page. Mm -hmm. um, so just click on that to just find out who they are and probably how you can contact them. For sure, exactly. Very important for you guys to be active in your local government. So Victoria, what requirements are there to become a county commissioner? So in order to become a county commissioner, you must have lived in that county for 12 months um, and be at least 21 years old. Uh, you must be a registered voter and you are entitled to vote in the county where you reside. Um, I think I actually read earlier that they might change, they're considering changing it to 18 um, years old, but I don't know how that's going <laughs> to turn out. <laughs> well, you but, know what? Yeah. I think it's great for people watching this, especially I hope, you know, people watching this and people in our communities are inspired to run. And that's why we, we want yes. to give you guys this information is because we want people like us people who represent us uh, to have yes. these positions of power. It's very, very important. So, you know, you have to be, you know, at least 21 years old as of today, uh, 12 months, <laughs> as of today, right? This can change at any moment. Um, reside in the change. county for at, least 12, for at least 12 months. Make sure you are a registered voter and that you can actually vote in your county. So we do want to do a little call to action for everybody. Uh, Victoria, can you tell us about your link? Yes, so if you guys have not registered to vote and you need to, please use our link, um, our bit.ly link slash vecinos vote. It's all lowercase because it is um, case sensitive and we will put the links in the comments. It's If you look in a comment, that the link is right there. Also, the link to fill out your 2020 census if you haven't already. 
Um, but yeah, just, just important to register to vote. Remember the deadline is October 5th. So if you haven't yet, if your sister hasn't, your brother hasn't, tell them to register through our link, please. Exactly. And you guys will have up until uh, September 30th to answer the 2020 census. So they do overlap yes. a bit. But you know what? It's time to get some adulting done. Get registered to vote. Answer the 2020 census. Um, make sure to join us for our next episode on Tuesday, September 22nd, where we're going to go over another uh, section that's going to be on your ballot. We're going to be talking about U.S. Senators and U.S. House of Representatives so that you know and you are well informed and know who you're voting for and the impact that that will have in your life. We will also yeah. next Tuesday, we are going to start having civics chats in Spanish so that this information is also available to our amazing Spanish speakers um, and that don't necessarily speak English. We want this information to be available to you as well. We will be talking about voter registration next week for our Spanish speakers. So make sure you join us next Tuesday at eight. And then the following Tuesday, we'll be talking about U.S. Senators and U.S. House of Representatives. They will be on your ballot. Make sure you join us. Yes, those are very exciting topics to talk about in the upcoming week. So make sure you guys don't miss out. Right on your kind day, you know. Um, every Tuesday at 8 p.m., yes. you can see me and Michelle. Absolutely. Thank you guys so much for watching this week's episode of Civics Chat. And we hope to see you next week. Bye. Bye.